Kenny Washington, son of Negro League player Edgar Blue Washington, born in the Lincoln Heights neighborhood of Los Angeles, California, on August 31st, 1918. Before breaking bears in the NFL, Kenny was a star football and baseball player at Abraham Lincoln High School. He even brought the school two championships in both sports. After his time there was up, he went on to attend UCLA, where again, he was a star player in baseball and football. In fact, he was the first African American on UCLA's baseball team. And while he was there, Kenny really got the shine. Luckily for him, he wasn't the only African American on the football team. There was Ray Bartlett, Woody Strode, and the man who would go on to integrate the MLB, Jackie Robinson, who was also Kenny's teammate in baseball. Kenny achieved a lot of impressive things at UCLA, but his most impressive game happened in December of 1939. That day was the first time rivals USC and UCLA played a game with the Rose Bowl on the line. It was one of the largest attended college football games in the history of the LA Memorial Coliseum and featured impressive performances by Robinson and Washington. Terrific football game. Even to this day, I can reflect back of the uh, great players that they had. And if you think of Kenny Washington and uh, Jackie Robinson, they had a great football team. And yet, despite all their hard work, UCLA did not advance to the Rose Bowl. The game itself ended in a scoreless tie, with the Pacific Coast Conference deciding to award the USC instead. The official reason was that USC had fewer ties in the record that year, two to UCLA's three. But many felt that the real reason was that they knew Southern schools would not want to play against black players. At that time, it was unusual to have that many black players on a college football team. So Bartlett, Strode, Robinson, and Washington got a lot of attention, but not always good. Another way that race affected their football career is the fact that neither Kenny, Ray, Jackie, or Woody, or any other African American that year was drafted into the NFL. While there was never an official policy, the fact remains that the NFL at that point had not drafted an African American player since 1933.
But yet, despite all that, Kenny kept on playing. Kenny would go on to have another great performance of the 1940 College All-Star Game. He even impressed George Hallis of the Chicago Bears, who wanted to sign up to the scene, but couldn't due to the NFL's unofficial policy against integration. From 1940 to 1945, he played for a team called the Hollywood Bears, who were affiliated with the Pacific Coast Professional Football League. And he wasn't alone. His former UCLA teammate, Woody Strode, was on the team with him. And then, on January 15th, 1946, everything changed. Just three days before that, Dan Reeves' request to move the then Cleveland Rams to Los Angeles was approved by the NFL after initially being denied. And so on that day, representatives of the Rams went before the LA Coliseum Commission to try to get approval to play there for their home games. But then, during a public comment section of the meeting, one man changed everything. Hallie Harding, a man with an extensive sports history, gave an impassioned speech in which he argued that the Rams should not be allowed to play in the Memorial Coliseum due to the NFL's policy against signing African Americans. As a contrast, he brought up LA's own history with integrated football teams, like UCLA and the Hollywood Bears. And finally, he brought up Kenny Washington. He talked about how despite his impressive performance in 1939 in that very stadium, and his impressive performance in the 1940 College All-Star game, that no NFL team would take him because of the color of his skin. One important person who was in attendance at the speech was general manager of the Rams, Charles Walsh, who sometime after the speech is said to have said, quote, any qualified Negro football players invited by me at this moment to try out for the Los Angeles Rams. And then, after all those years of being overlooked because of the color of the skin, on March 21st, 1946, a year before Jackie Robinson's debut in the MLB, the now Los Angeles Rams bought Kenny Washington's contract from the Hollywood Bears. And the NFL was never the same again.
Washington Stadium Foundation and Lincoln High for honoring my grandfather's legacy. In the spirit of leaving the world better than we found it, we should all choose to affect change by speaking up, by being the first, and by being the dominant that causes the effect. I would like to remind you all that my grandfather entered an all-white football league 75 years ago that has now led to a league that in 2021 is 75% people of color. As we all know, as we all know, being the first is hard, it is scary, and it is exhausting. But that is an indication that change is meant to happen. So I ask all of you, take the first step, escape out of the safety that is your comfort zone, and we all be there to share in the excitement of your very own legacy. Thank you so much, and go Tigers!